Okay, let's continue about the human resource development. I can say that the two biggest benefits of Korean maritime education and training system are the first, it is a national university system, and second, it is tripartite cooperative system. Food, accommodation, and the part of the tuition fee are supported by the states. The graduate may get the exemption of military service. Training ships and her operation and maintenance costs are financed by the state. Three parties are university, industry, and the government. Shipping industry provides some scholarships and onboard training opportunities free of charge. Government provides all the financial support and training ships and university devote themselves to the training of qualified manpower. It is surely very effective and powerful system. Let's take a good example of Korea Maritime University. They are located at the entrance of the Busan port in a small but beautiful KMU island where is ideal location for Maritime Training Institute. This photo shows the KMOU campus. They have two training ships, which are directly berthed on the school pier. Comprehensive engine workshop, integrated simulation facilities, and student dormitories are the key facilities. The KMOU was founded in November 1945, just after the end of World War II, before the establishment of the Korean government. However, the KMOU cannot be developed because the Korean War was broken out in 1950. All the school buildings and facilities are demolished during the war. Nothing remains in Korean Peninsula. We were luckily to secure some financial aid from the United Nations Korean Reconstruction Agency, UNCRA in short word, to build Merchant Marine Academy at Busan. Finally, KMOU has settled down on this new campus in 1955, and they were developed and advanced dramatically for the next 20 years' time. They opened a postgraduate course in 1960. They have had first training ship Bando in 1960 as well. They doubled the number of intake in 1968 and doubled again in 1977. Automatically, they are faced with a space shortage on the campus. They require wide new campus space to accommodate the enlarged number of students. They built new campus on the small island and moved to this new campus in 1974. KMOU has spent their growth period in this new campus from 1974 until now. New training ship Hanbada of size is about 3,500 gross ton was launched in 1975. In 1980, they made a big change in the history of the KMOU. They have started to open new courses other than navigation and marine engineering. Shipping business course, maritime law course, and course for mechanical engineering for ships were opened in 1980. Later, many other courses were opened, including naval architecture, electronics and marine communication, maritime trade, ocean engineering, control engineering, logistics and harbor management, etc. Many other courses. March 1991 
was a historical moment in KMOU. They allowed female cadet to enter into the navigation and marine engineering course. Next year, in 1992, KMOU became university status with three different faculties. There are four faculties under the KMOU. They are Faculty of Maritime Sciences, Faculty of Ocean Science and Technology, Faculty of Engineering, and the Faculty of Inter International Studies. Please look at the various departments under the College of Maritime Sciences. There are eight departments altogether, four courses in Navigation Group and four courses in Marine Engineering Group. Maritime Transportation, Navigation, Coast Guard Studies, and Global Maritime Studies are the Navigation Group. And Marine System Engineering, Marine Engineering, Offshore Plant Management, and Maritime IT are Marine Engineering Group. There are about 8,700 students in the university. Among 8,700, 2,100, 2,100 are students of maritime studies. 1,500 are the students of ocean science and technology. Now, let's move to next agenda. How the maritime manpower contribute to the national economy? When we were independent in 1945, there are only three small-sized commercial motor ships in this country. To add insult to injury, the Korean War has broken after five years and demolished all facilities and infrastructure in this country. We lost more than 400,000 lives and injured more than a million people during the war, war for three years. Therefore, overseas aids are badly needed to maintain our daily lives. The Korean economy was based on overseas aid, such as Marshall Plan of USA. The capita, the per capita income was only $67 in 1953. Then what was the seed money for Korean economic development? Certainly, the ODA, Official Development Assistance by United States and other donors are the invaluable asset for Korean economy. The amount of grant aid was $4,400 million, and the amount of credit assistance was $4 million from USA during 1945 to 1969. The foreign currency earned by Korean overseas workers had incredible impact for the development of the Korean economy at the same time. Overseas seafarers earned hundreds of millions of dollars, and miners and nurses in West Germany have earned about $101 million during 1964-1975. The amount of foreign currency earned by overseas seafarers during 1999 to 2001 was $310 million, which is equivalent to export of 700,000 cars, because the net profit was only $440 per car. This slide shows the 10 foreign currency earning industry of Korea in 2012. Number one industry is the export of petroleum products. 
Number two is a semiconductor. Number three is car export. The, number four is the shipping. And number fifth is the shipbuilding industry. Here, you may have a question that do the Korea produce crude oil? Absolutely no. Korea import crude oil and export product oils. You see, Korea is number three oil import country and number four oil export country. Let's try to find out the current state of maritime industry in Korea. The number of workers means employees in maritime industry were 312,000 people in 2016, which is 193,000 people in shipbuilding industry and about 99,000 people in shipping and port and logistics part industry. The employee inductive effect was over 1.3 million persons, which account for 4.7% of labor force and 9.8% of GNP in Korea. This slide shows the turnover of maritime industry of Korea in 2016. Total amount of turnover, turnover of maritime industry was $1.8 billion in 2016. However, you can find out the turnover of each sector in detail from this table. Korea has 1,576 ships of 75.1 million deadweight tons, which is 4.7% of the world fleet in 2013 and they are placed fifth in the world. However, they have 1,647 ships of 76.7 million deadweight ton in 2019, which ranked the seventh in the world. You may find out extremely exceptional story on this slide. There are many private shipping companies have been established in 1960s through 1990s. 31 companies were founded in 1960s. 39 companies were founded in 1970s. Please keep an eye on the numbers in bracket in red color. See red color? It indicates the number of company which was established by mariners who has seafaring background. 25 shipping companies were founded by ex-seafarers during 1960s to 1990s. How can we explain such a large number of shipping companies have been established by mariners even though shipping is very capital intensive industry. There is no word to describe it exception. This, there is no word to describe it except entrepreneurship of marine officers. Shipping related capital, capitalists are originated from merchant marine officers operators of shipping agency and coastal shipping company. Generally, they do not have enough capital to acquire a large side vessel. Therefore, they have to demonstrate entrepreneurship in order to overcome these advantage, disadvantages and difficulties. In Korea, due to entrepreneurship, successfully demonstrated by maritime officers and managers of small shipping-related business, shipping-related capital accounted for more than 
22.5% of newly established shipping companies over the period, period of 1950s to 1970s. It is being continued until the present day. There are more than 50 ship owners who have a seafaring background in 2019. Sinoco group of shipping companies is number one ship owner. They have about 150 ships of 10.9 million deadweight tons, including chemical tankers, oil tankers, container ships, and bulk carriers. Number two ship owner will be the Polaris Shipping Company. They have 29 ships of very large ore carriers and capeside bulk carriers. Their tonnage is about 7.7 .7 million deadweight tons. Besides the ship owners, many ex seafarers are working in shipyard as well. About average, 100 to 120 ex-merchant marine officers are working in big three shipyards, including Hyundai Heavy Industry, Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering, and Samsung Heavy Industry. Entrepreneurship is the state of being an entrepreneur, or the activities associated with being an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a person who set up businesses and business deals. Then you may have a question. Why many of the merchant marine officers in Korea became a big ship owners? In our opinion, they have expertise and experience in ship operation and management cargo management and crew management. And second point, they are tend to have a dream of becoming, becoming a ship owner. And third, they have willingness to take risk and overcome difficulties in order to transform the stable seafarer's position into uncertain ship owner's status by purchasing his own ship. The typical examples are Mr. Chang Yung Fa, the founder of Evergreen Shipping in Taiwan, and Mr. Cho Chung Hun, founder of the Hanjin Group in Korea. They are the ex seafarers. Another important agenda we should remember that the shipping serves as the national security and defense in emergency. Because the shipping, means the commercial fleet, is the fourth national security and defense force after the army, navy, and air force. You know that the commercial fleet plays a pivotal role in military logistics during the war. It was proved through the World War II and Falkland Island War between United Kingdom and Argentine, etc. Therefore, it is essential to maintain certain number of national fleet instead of FOC ships in Korea. There are three po four photos. The left photo shows the first national president of Korea, Mr. Lee, has visited KMU in 1955 to celebrate the completion of campus buildings in Busan. The middle photo shows the second national president of Korea, Mr. Yoon, has visited KMU in 1960 for the naming ceremony of our first training ship Steamship Bando. The right side of the photo shows the third national president of Korea, Mr. Park, has visited KMU in 1960.
in 1965 to order to increase the number of students of KMU. Then perhaps you are starting to doubt why those national presidents have visited to this small academy in important time of establishment of a new government. We are sure that they have understood the importance of shipping and seafarers for the development of country. You may also have a question. Why the third president park has ordered to increase the number of students of KMU? He recognized that the foreign currency, such as US dollars, earned by the overseas Korean workers is very, very important source for the acquisition of foreign currencies. Especially the seafarers who work on foreign flagship during that time are contributing significantly for foreign currency earning. That is why he had visited KMU and ordered to increase the number of students as much as possible. As such, the perception of shipping by the top people, the policymakers, like a nation's president, is very important. Therefore, you should try to make the pre your president understand the importance of shipping for your country. You already have seen this slide before. When we independent from the, in 1945, I told that we have only three motor ships remained. Can you the ship in the red circle? Yes. She is the second generation of wartime standard cargo ship, which called Victoria ship, who served in Korean War. Her name is steamship Meredith Victory that she evacuated 140,000 refugees from North Korean part to the South Korean part at the end of December 1950. You should know or understand some basic history of the Korean War. The war has broken in June 25, 1950. After several days, Seoul, the capital city, was fought by North Korea. The Allied Union, including U.S. troops, landed on September 15th at Incheon, and the Seoul was recovered on September 29. However, unfortunately, the massive number of Chinese troops came to the war at the end of November. Therefore, the Allied troops and many civilians must leave the northern part of the country to the south. Thousands and thousands of people gathered at the port of Hungnam. The code name was Christmas cargo to evacuate the soldiers and civilians from there. The victory ship, the capacity is to accommodate only 60 people because she is the cargo ship. But there are 47 crews already there, so remaining seat is only 13. But Thousand and thousand peoples are waiting at the key side of the port of Hungnam to evacuate from there to the southern part of the country, uh, Korea. So finally, she evacuated 140 
thousand peoples, which is the Guinness record at that time. She can, she could save one hundred forty thousand peoples successfully. So the U.S. President Truman said that it is wonderful and best Christmas present ever received. So this story indicates that how the commercial ship could contribute for smooth logistics during the war time, and how the commercial ship can contribute contribute for the national security and safety in case of the national emergency. Okay, in conclusion, there are four important driving forces for the rapid growth of Korean economy and shipping. Number one, we have enough manpower who are well educated and highly qualified in many sectors including shipping. And second motivation is we could arrange the smooth invitation of foreign capital inflows for SOC infrastructure, such as to construct iron mill, oil refinery, heavy industries, including shipyard. The third driving force should be the outward-looking trade regime. It means the state-initiated export policy made the export-driven economy become successful. Another important force was the favorable external environment from, from our point of view. Not your point of view, it's our point of view. In a sense, the Vietnam War has contributed considerably to the development of the Korean economy. Korea has earned about $235 million, including their wages and allowances, which did very important contribution for the national economic development. Another Innovative opportunity was the Middle East construction boom during 1973 to 1985. Korea actively participated in the physical infrastructure centered construction boom in the Gulf states of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iran, and Iraq. And they were able to become a major player in the Middle Eastern construction market in the 1970s. Eventually, we made a contract of $67 billion. The seafarers who work on foreign flagships have earned $1.6 billion during 1964 to 1983 for 20th time. Again, we have to empathize that the well-trained and educated manpower are the crucial national asset. That is my lecture today. Thanks for listening. And I hope you can get some ideas how you can develop your shipping and maritime industry in the future. If you have any question, or if you want to know some more detailed story or cases of the Korean maritime industry, please send email me. I already show my email address and contact uh, addresses before, so please send email to me. Then I will try my best to answer to your questions and uh, your comment. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye now. Thank you.